Kate Smith, Bulletproof, Shots, Shots, Shots. It's a little early for that. That's yeah, in the song, you know, yeah. the Shots, Shots. I love mm-hmm. that. All right. Anyway. B105 Buzz. Brought to you by East Central Energy. Member on homegrown community focus since 1936. What's happening? So you can meet a Wahlberg brother. <laughs> Which not one? the best one. Not the best one. Not I'm Mark? sorry, Paul. It's not Mark. Donnie is the best one. But um, that's neither here nor there. But Paul, who is oh. a famous celebrity chef, part He's of Wahlburgers. The guy behind all of it. Exactly. Yeah. He is doing a meet and greet at Wahlburgers at Mall of America, noon to one. You don't have to buy a ticket or anything. You just show up, secure your place in line. The meet and greet is just an hour. So get there early. Um, you get to take a picture with him. You know, I think Paul's a great Wahlberg brother. Yeah. It's not the best one, but he's a good one. So um, why not? You have your Thursday afternoon. I would go to this, but, you know, I got to work. Many, I'm wondering how many brothers in our Wahlberg, Wahlberg brothers are there? I thought of three. Uh, they have n- nine children. Oh. Arthur, Jim, Paul, Robert, Tracy, Michelle, Debbie, Mark, Donnie, of course. Who am I missing there? Anyway. Who is the richest Wahlberg brother? Well, it's got to be Mark, right? It's probably Mark. Should be Donnie. Oh, Mark Wahlberg, four hundred million. Guess how much Donnie is? A lot. 20, twenty-five million. Not even close to older brother Mark, but hey, twenty-five million. It's not a big deal. Or younger brother Nothing Mark. Nothing to sneeze at. Donnie's the older brother of Don. Oh, why is he? am I so invested in this? I don't. How could you not be invested? Okay, well, I'm going to talk about my boring thing that's not Wahlberg related, but Older Farmers Almanac has predicted the first frost dates for fall. Oh, man. Coming up, you know what? You know, here in Duluth, if you're out by the harbor, we have one of the later frost dates in the state. Okay. But right. uh, Hermantown, like, because I, I didn't went over the lake, but I did all different, I did 10 cities across Minnesota. So you can read about that at B105Country.com, but it's uh, usually late September, early October. Yeah, they go by the averages. And stuff, Fall but. has been in the air. It's been a little brisk at times. So. Well, and then, but yeah, I mean, when we were at Grand Country Nights, it felt like, oh man, fall could be here anytime. I know time. it was cold. And then Monday, I was golfing anger, and it just roasted because it was like ninety. Mm-hmm. So you know, Mother Nature still doesn't know what she's doing, but never. There you go. That's your uh, B105 buzz this morning, and we've got uh, more up next. <laughs> Posty, that's what they call him, right? Posty, post. Yeah. What's his? Is that his full name? Post. I don't think that's that his a real name. name? I don't think that's his real name. I'm looking. I don't know. Austin Richard Post. Uh, I had a feeling his name was Austin. He looks like an Austin. Wasn't he from Texas, too? He's from New York. No, he's from Texas. No, it says Syracuse, New York. Post Malone birthplace. Yeah, Syracuse, no, 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 yeah. So, New York. Okay, let me know. Post Malone. It's his hometown, so he grew up in Texas. That's what I'm saying. He's from Texas. But he wasn't born there. Doesn't mean... Okay. You're born on another planet, but you're from Minnesota, you know. You were, yeah. <laughs> okay, shots fired. Anyway, uh, B105 weather forecast coming up. Lawrence Country Lowdown. We got anything juicy today? Always. Any more court dates moved? No court dates moved, okay. but the morning is still young. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that coming up. B105, B105, Northland's number one for new country. So yesterday I had my Facebook memories pop up from seven years ago, mm-hmm. and it was a picture of me and my daughter. And she was like three and a half, almost four years old. Those always get you. You always uh, get a picture of your daughter and then you get sad because time is going so fast. Uh, or like, uh, I know. or even like a picture of, uh, of our teenager now. He's 16 and you see these pictures. He is so a little, tall. Little peanut, you know, and I'm like, ah. Oh. B105, Northland's number one for new country. And uh, let's do Lawrence Country Lowdown. What do you say? Let's do it. What's happening? Okay, so do you remember? We've talked about this a lot over the years. Lainey Wilson, she used to be a Hannah Montana impersonator. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forget, yeah, you mentioned that before. <clears throat> yeah, back in high school. So she is now one of the biggest stars on the planet. So it was kind of a cool full circle moment. But Miley Cyrus was honored with a ceremony Sunday night. She was named a Disney legend. I didn't think this was like going to be such like a big ceremony and such a huge deal, even though Miley is a legend. But Lainey Wilson was there to honor her. And then also she took the stage to perform Best of Both Worlds, which is the theme song for Hannah Montana. And Lainey has those Hannah Montana vibes, you know, yeah. she really does. So she also was really sweet and said, Miley, my first job was impersonating Hannah Montana. I used to make bank in high school when I was doing it. And she also just said, you inspired me to believe in myself that I could be an ordinary girl from a small town and 
do something great. And Miley was sobbing. Cause she really? Was, she was so moved by it. Wow. So you can watch that little clip, B105Country.com. We also talked about this jelly roll. He announced recently that he was going to get all new teeth. He said he really wanted to get new teeth. Now that he had the money to do so, he didn't before. And now we get a little behind the scenes, I guess, recap of it. The dentist who did it kind of explained. Are they like implants? He got new veneers and then he has, um, he had like some like root canals, I think, some wisdom teeth pulled out. So he had a lot done. He said he didn't take care of his teeth for a long time. Well. And then um, also they were calling jelly roll anesthesia roll because he was, you know, under the anesthesia and was saying some crazy things. So Yikes. Yeah, you I've can, seen him right there. Yeah, they look great. He's looking, uh, you know, he's looking a little better every time I see him. Good for I him. I wouldn't want anybody filming my mouth like that, though. That's very up close and personal. Or when you're on anesthesia. Yeah. Imagine correct. what would come out of your mouth. Oh, boy. <sighs> yeah. When I got my wisdom teeth pulled, I was saying some crazy things. But anyways, check that out. B105country.com. While you're there, you need a laugh. Watch this video of Jordan Davis. He's on tour, um, and he... I didn't know he was, like, so funny. You and I got to talk to him, and he was great, but he's actually hilarious. He did a bunch of pranks on his fans, like, went out into the stands before, like, he went on stage and was just sitting there and was like, do you even know this guy? Who are who are we here to see? And, like, no one really recognized that it was Jordan Davis. Um, well, you don't expect to see him there, you know, when they're out. It, it, right. You know. And it's just hilarious. So check that out, B105Country.com. That's funny. Yeah. I was looking up... Uh, when did we talk to Jordan Davis? We talked re- to him last summer. Feels like a lot longer than that. Yeah. yeah. He was a nice guy. Super Lee nice. Bryce, super nice guy, he too. He was so nice. I'm just ticked off that he caught a bigger walleye than me in Minnesota. I as, know. As, Only by half an inch, though. I lied. Was, oh. Mine, you know, wow, I'm, that lie flew off your tongue. 29 and a half. Well, you know, when you're fishing. Okay, it was like 29. Round I added up. a half an inch. Because he said he had 30 inch walleye. And I don't believe that. I'm going to need to have some proof of that. Because I mean, Well, that would have been the time to ask him when a, we were on his tour bus. That's a big. Well, I don't You wanna, don't want to ask that. I don't want to ruffle it. Carrie Underwood. Good girl. B105. Northland's number one for new country. 710 laugh off returns today. Yeah, I got to redeem myself. That's okay. I had a pretty good joke. I yeah. remember it. But I had a pretty good joke. I can't remember the joke. Was it Diarrhea day. Week and it runs through Friday? That wasn't the winning joke, but you did use that joke. And I, I had yeah. a diarrhea joke last week with the Olympics. Oh, I thought you were going to say you. No, I had Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. Or not that allegedly. Not going to talk anything about any. I'm moving on. <laughs> not like what you did. Anyway, that's right. 710 Laugh Off. <laughs> Stick around for that. And then uh, also at 740 this morning, Lauren's going to talk about the most charming cities in Minnesota. No, no where the most men. charming men live in Minnesota. And this is science. I didn't come up with this list, so. Okay. We'll discuss. Here on B105. All right, here we go. 710 Laugh Off on B105. You won yesterday. Uh, you go first. Okay. Today. I have some Bigfoot jokes today. Oh, great. Because I know... What hopefully will make you laugh. Ken, did you hear about the race between the Yeti and Sasquatch? Well, Sasquatch won. Sasquatch won by a Bigfoot. That was going to be like a, it was a Bigfoot race. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. would have yeah, probably that, been better. Okay. Warm-up joke. Yeah, okay. Lauren, how do you steal a coat? Your jacket. I almost laughed at that. I, you know, That's it's so ridiculous. simple that it might work. Yeah, yeah sometimes, right. yeah. Yeah. Ken, what do you call a sketchy looking Bigfoot? Sasquatch. That's what the kids say these days. I know, they sus. say sus. I've been starting to use it working I have never said that. Uh, but I got the joke, so. Okay. Lauren, I got a new job last week as a new top dog at Old McDonald's Farm. On the new C I E I O. Ken, I knew that was coming, but I still laughed. Oh, whatever. D-I-E-I-O. I still laughed. Oh, hey, there Man. you go. Look at that. Okay. We're on a roll. We're on a roll well, today. I mean, it's only Wednesday, so, you know. Well, in your terms, it's almost Friday, though. That's true, but I, I mean, I have time. You know what I mean? So. There you go. 710 Laugh Off here on B105. We've got your break user question uh, next. B105 Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren, 720. And uh, today, well, we're going to be another warm one today. A little bit hazy, though, but we'll be in the 80s again. Mm-hmm. Got your brain teaser question. You want to go over yesterday's, Lauren? Sure. This is the number one go-to small talk topic. 
the answer of the weather. That was a really easy one, but that's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's, it's okay a good go-to to in the elevator, you know. Elevator talk? Yeah. Okay. Um, same, you know, when you the elevator yeah, door closes, actually, you got to make small talk, talk yeah. and it's like awkward. But anyways, this one's kind of easy. If you think of recent events, we might have talked about this yesterday. This famous tourist attraction has 1,665 steps. That's a workout. Yeah, I the closest I've been is um, Las Vegas. There's a replica. And I did okay, go to the top. Okay, not geographically, but yeah. as an okay. Famous tourist attraction is 1,665 steps. Which one? And uh, yeah, don't overthink this one. It was just... Yeah. Okay, 727-B105. I don't want to give it away. Yeah, don't overthink it. But like I said, recent events, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Luke Combs, View on Me 105. It's Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren, 724. We got your brain teaser question. Yep. The, this famous tourist attraction has 1,665 steps. Which one is it? Let's not overthink this one today, shall yeah, we? Yeah, no, it's yeah. Uh, kind of easy. Let's see what we got. Hello, B105. What's your guess? I don't know. The Eiffel Tower? Tower? Yeah, the Eiffel Tower. That's what gave it away, the fact that we just, we're just all about the Eiffel Tower with the Paris Olympics. <laughs> yeah. well, we've never been. <laughs> Just the Olympics, seen it a lot. Yeah, and then, that, and then that nut job that climbed it before the closing ceremony. They had to close it down for evacuate the tower. Do you ever hear about that? No, I didn't. Yeah, some guy climbed it, whatever. Concerning. Anyway, what's your name? Uh, Mike. Mike, congratulations. We got some Papa Murphy's pizza for you, okay? All right, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Mike. Thanks for playing. We'll do it again tomorrow, same time, right here. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited about this. Coming up at 740, Lauren's Love Advice. Yep. It's the most where the most charming men in Minnesota are. Yeah, it's a, a real study that was done. This isn't like my personal opinion, um, and I'll tell you where. So if you, I'm thinking Iron Range, well, find out. This is a survey of three thousand single women who I made mean, this list. I'm pretty charming. I mean, and I came from the Iron Range. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. Well, fine. I'm not going to give it away right now, but I'll spill the tea in a bit. I don't know if I'm really that charming or not. I've been called gruff a time or two. Oh, my gosh. I've ah. had to hear about this for years. And by the way, it wasn't I'll never, me. Uh, I'll never forget that one. It wasn't me that called you that. So. It's okay. 726 B105, your weather forecast up next. B105 Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren. Okay, the most charming cities, or men, places, the most charming places in Minnesota you'll find men, right? Yeah, so in this case, I charming murdered means... murdered that. <laughs> <laughs> Survey okay reveals each state's most charming cities. This has to do with chivalry, well-mannered men. Okay. Men that go on dating apps and they take it seriously, right? They're honest, polite, That's respectful. what chivalry is now, is being respectful on a dating app. Wow, yeah. Things have changed. Yeah. So in this instance, um, the personality traits of a well-mannered man, like I said, good communication, thoughtful, patient, understanding, polite, all that good stuff. So... The number one most, where you can find the most charming men in Minnesota. Do you have any guesses? Um, it's not Duluth or anywhere. Are you talking about like an actual city? Yes. I don't know. You're talking about Rochester. Rochester? Rochester. I know some folks from Rochester, and yeah. I don't know if they're that charming. I don't know if I've ever been there. Like You've been there. Well, yeah, but not long enough to like, oh. you know, have an opinion on that per se. But then, of course... In the second and third spots, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Nah. So apparently, the study was done serving 3,000 women in Minnesota, and they all were in agreement that Rochester is where, quote, gentlemen consistently go out of their way to show respect and courtesy. Then they said Minneapolis men are the epitome of polite and considerate behavior, and men in St. Paul are... Very willing to lend a hand, making everyone feel important. How do they figure this out? What's the methodology behind it? So, talk to 3,000 women, and they just basically, like, quizzed them on their dating app experiences. And, like, if they've gone on a date with somebody, let's say, I don't know, in Rochester, how that went. Yeah. Things like that. Maybe it's just because there's more people in those cities. Maybe. Well, I don't think Rochester's any bigger, but Minneapolis-St. Paul for sure is. Yeah. Maybe it's I mean, maybe Duluth would have been number four. Doesn't go that far. Maybe it's the Mayo and all the professionals working at the yeah. Mayo. You know. Yeah. So they did this online, and um, yeah, they said they used a two-step process to ensure representativeness through sampling and post stratification waiting. So I don't know what that means, but talk to three thousand women in Minnesota. 
different ages and different beliefs, all that stuff, and that's what they came. I would say that uh, Duluth would be number four on the list. That's what I was going to say. And go with that, followed yeah. by, uh, uh, see who else is in our demographic and listening here, uh, Cloquet, uh, Two Harbors. I'm just trying to hit all the spots here. You know? Yeah. Well, anyway. Well, I think, like, yes, those are small very town charm? chivalrous and charming men, but it's like those are probably too small to make a big impact on a list like this. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I don't know. What's what's the thing about dating more? Like, um, men still pay every um, time? Yeah, like on the first date. I thought you paid on every date. Me specifically? No, I just meant oh, in general. I, was like, I think I no, paid on like every date think, for the first few years. I think for the first few dates, my fiance paid, but then I started being like, when you like start really dating, it's like, okay, we can go 50-50. And we still 50-50. My wife took me to the cleaners, you know. Well, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, they should we send out. her a bill? <laughs> should <laughs> I send her a Venmo request? If well, you're listening, Venmo me <laughs> no. for what you owe, Kevin. No, very good. Very good. I'm just kidding. She's hopefully not listening right now. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. Zach Brown Band right now. <laughs> Lauren's love advice. And guys lies. B105, Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren, 748. Sun is shining today. Going to be about 79 or so. We got a little bit of haze and fog this morning. Mm-hmm. So I saw this, and I had no idea. It's on B105Country.com if you want to see photos. But there are certain foods that are illegal in Minnesota. What? Five yeah. strange foods that are now illegal in Minnesota. And some of these make sense. So, like, horse meat. Which I just, even looking at that photo, I, I can't talk about it. Why not? I can't cheat horse meat. Because it has to do with like the, I don't want to be dark, but like the slaughterhouses and stuff. Ugh. Yeah. So, you know, that one makes sense. Shark fin soup. That's kind of like Who eats controversial. Shark fin soup? Well, I know they have it in like Iceland and places like that. Isn't that something to be doing? Isn't that something like the, the shark fins are supposed to give you some kind of, uh, uh, I don't know male stamina or something like that. You know what I mean? I've never heard that. that but I, mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna, I'll stop talking. They have to that. obviously like kill sharks to do that. Uh-huh. So yeah, that uh, caviar, beluga caviar, that's just disgusting. But then some of these I have questions. So like raw milk is on the list and um, that's just because it can be kind of dangerous according to this. But the thing that sent me, Ken, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're talking about the haggis? Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting looking. Who would even eat that? It's a... Native food to Scotland. It's made from a sheep's stomach. And it's filled with a liver, heart, and lungs. And then oatmeal. I can't. Who would ever eat this? <laughs> and I'm not trying to knock, like, a culture because I'm sure that's, like, a famous thing there that they eat. But that has sent me we could probably, in a bad way. No, whatever you're about to say, please. Well, how do you know what I'm going to say? It's going to be like, we should try it. No, I don't think I want to try it. I saw Gore... Um, uh, I think I think I saw this on like was Chef Gordon Ramsay do this? He probably did. And they, he made haggis or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't need to eat that. I don't even look at that anymore. That's kind of disgusting. I'm not yeah. really worried about having anything illegal to eat because I don't think I'm going to try that. Yeah, no, I'm not going to try really any of these things. But I thought it was interesting. I didn't know that there were foods that you couldn't eat, but most of those make sense. Haggis. Yeah. That you know, I learn something new every time I go on our website, and that. That is. Uh, is there anywhere you can get haggis here in the Northland? Does anybody know? It's a illegal. Place? Well, what if they they got like a modified haggis? Because oh. you, you just can't have lungs in it. That's what it said in the article. You can't okay. have lungs in it. Anybody oh my know? gosh! Oh. <laughs> Good morning, the Breakfast Club. Sorry, Sorry ruining your breakfast, I'm... man. Um, yeah, if anybody knows where you can get haggis, legal haggis, give us a call. Let us know. Oh. Hit us up on the app. Love to know. We'll bring some for Lauren. <laughs> a picture. A picture. Yeah. It's a little it's a little jarring. Yeah. I'll check it out on our app right now. Yeah, 727-B105. Haggis. Okay. Well, thanks, Lauren, for that. You're welcome. Keeping us up. Come on, B105. It's the Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren, and we have Nicole with us from Animal Allies. And last time we talked, Nicole, you guys were like full, full, full at capacity. Is it still that way there? Yeah, I was scared. I was scared the last time we talked, but it is much better right now. Well, that's oh, good. Good, that's good, good, good. Yes, our long-term bonded pair, Coda and Apollo, finally went home, which oh. is awesome. They'd been with us for like eight months. Yeah. Um, and we got some other dogs out. We got some fosters that stepped up just to kind of clear some kennel space. So we 
definitely have a little bit of breathing room for the moment. Um, but, you know, that just means that, you know, strays will keep coming. Surrenders are going to keep coming. So um, it was awesome to see the community kind of turn out and help us in that moment. And we hope that that little bit of energy and that push will continue. And we've got our open house happening tomorrow, 12 to 6. So you can swing by. You'll be able to walk through the kennel, see all the dogs, learn all about us. So um, tons of food and games and vendors. So totally free. Definitely swing by if you're interested. Noon to 6 tomorrow? Okay, cool. cool. Good to know. We'll, we'll uh, keep that in mind. And then we're talking about RJ today. Yes, yes. So RJ, uh, he is probably just creeping up on a year old. So a young dog came in as a stray. So we didn't know a ton about his background, but he has just been so sweet. He, When he meets you for the first time, he just gets the best butt wiggles <laughs> I've ever seen. He's so excited. Loves to carry around toys. He's played well with other energetic dogs at the shelter, and he's done well with um, our, our older campers as well. Um, since he's, you know, just coming up on a year old, he's still kind of jumpy, a little bit mouthy, so he needs a little bit of work with that. And for that reason, you know, probably bigger kids that aren't going to get knocked over. But um, overall, just so sweet, has an awesome smile, loves to play, and is just a total ham. And we love him and know that somebody else out there is going to love him too. Yeah. I in all the pictures he is carrying a toy and he does just look like he is so much fun and so happy and just a lover for sure. He looks like a bowling ball can knock you right over. Yeah. <laughs> in a good way. But, yep, that's right there. <laughs> yep, he's running and he's playing and he's not looking <laughs> down you go, but not intentional and he is just a total sweet love bug, so we love him. Yeah, I bet. Well, that's cool. RJ, and uh, you can meet him tomorrow at noon to six at your open house, right? Yep, yep. You'll be able to see him and then all the kitty cats. We got some long-term kitties out last week, too. So we've got like a week to breathe, which is nice. So a great time for people to come on in and, and see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear things are uh, are going well and let's keep going that way. And mm-hmm. people can stop up at the yeah. open house tomorrow, noon to 6, and learn all more about it. That's great. Okay, well, hey, Nicole, thanks for chatting with us. We'll talk to you next week, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, have a good one. I was uh, I was hoping that maybe that I you know I I did that story out with our max capacity and put Coda and Apollo in. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, maybe maybe credit where credits do. I'm glad they found a home. I, yeah, that's all that really matters. But well, I hope so. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Neat. Eight eleven and B one hundred five. It's breakfast school with Ken and Lauren. Lauren Elena, B one hundred five, Northland's number one for new country. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Listen.